So uh, I've talked to both of you either, I don't remember if it was here personally about these things, but these are sort of general questions I always ask artists is, you know, what is your inspiration? You sort of touched on it with listening to music with your dad, but musically, who do you feel inspires you? Well, um, it's kind of changed a lot over the time of my life, but I started playing guitar at 12 and singing terribly at about 12 as well. (laughs) Um, And then... Back then, I was listening, you know, to like Billy Joel. Um, I listened to a lot of Billy Joel, um, Elton John, people like that. Um, started playing piano, learning all their songs and stuff. Um, but over the course of time, I went through my little punk stage, you know, I listened to a lot of metal, and I still do. I love stuff like that, which yeah. is kind of wild because our music's super mellow. Yeah, but it's um, super mainstream. Yeah, but. I'd say currently. Who do I currently I love I love the way that John Mayer feels in his music at all times. I mean, I think that he's a music mastermind in all things, far better guitar player than me. Um, John Mayer and like people like um I really like those fun acoustic y John Moreland and John Moreland. Eric Hutchinson um, and uh, yeah. Jason Isbell. Who's the guy that did Banana pa- Not Banana. Pa- uh, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. Yeah. Like, I love music like that. Yeah. Like, I write ben, a lot of songs ben Folds, yeah. similar. I, I, I mean, for me, the all-time, the greatest of all time. <laughs> he lives in Wasilla, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> for those who didn't know, last, last Tuesday, his name's Alan Stone. And uh, he is my blanket. He is kind of the foundation of my voice. But like him, I've been I haven't been like I'm a huge Alan Stone fan, probably one of his biggest fans, but I don't listen to Alan every day. Yeah. Like uh I know all of his songs front to back. I can listen to the first five seconds and tell you what song it is. So I don't ha- I don't really but I really right now my dream is to write one song as good as oh, like a like a chorus even as good as a Jason Isbell song. Like Yeah. Jason Isbell is probably the best songwriter of all, of time. all time. Yeah, so I've been really listening to like some like singer songwriter, just a dude and a guitar, for the past like two months. That's all I've been listening. to. Well, you to. also listen to a lot of Emory. Oh, and ba- yeah, Emory, uh, which yeah. is my uncle James's favorite band. Which I think I'm, I think I might know more songs than him now. Like I love that music, and that kind of, that kind of got us to where we are with the album. It's really yeah. a hodgepodge. Like, but like we don't listen to many, uh, a lot of music like the music we make which is weird but well i can't speak for noah but austin you were raised in music you know your mother's family is very musical and we were always listening to stuff i remember as a kid you simulating justin timberlake yeah um you had i mean you had an electric guitar when you were like five or six yeah i used to clean um, my room to summer love yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i'm glad that uh y- y'all y'all have taken from childhood something you grew to enjoy yeah. You know, the thing is, the only thing I, I, I don't say I worry for you about it, but it's a concern for sure, is you don't want it to become so much of a job you don't enjoy it anymore. Yeah, that is true. I well, went through that briefly with Taekwondo. It was my passion. And then when I was teaching it all the time, suddenly it becomes a job, and then you, you, you lose some of the joy. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is... That, that happened to me already, we I think. We yeah. have already <laughs> been through that experience um in the past few years yeah well I, well we were both in the renaissance program and uh we both uh i would say we're at the top of the program and um I, while i owe a lot to the bethel bethel university and the bethel renaissance program man did we sing and sing and sing and sing and sing and i kind of got to where i was kind of a robot doing it and began to kind of resent ever having to do it and uh kind of got this anxiety about performing instead of being excited and happy that I would get to perform. So I think I'm getting back into the groove of once I started making my own music again, it kind of helped me get back into the groove of wanting to do it. Yeah. Cause you were in it for four years. I was in it for five mm-hmm. and after so long and um, doing the same kind of sets and same kind of routine, you know, um, you lose kind of that sense of what got you into music in the first place, which was uh, discovery and figuring out not just like how to play it but figuring out who you are through the music itself and creating and creating yeah yeah and like you know pulling things from other people you know you sitting down and playing a uh john Mayer lick you know you're learning that thing but then also you take that lick and you figure out a couple other things to throw in there too by yourself and you're like 
I just did that. Yeah. And then you can't quit playing it for the next three hours, you know? The next three days. And yeah. that's kind of what happened with us on when we were writing the album, is that, like, we were both burnt out. And I think we both said multiple times, like, once college is over, I think I'm done playing music for a long, a time. long time. And then we sat down on the futon and started writing all those songs, and it was, like, all those feelings of, like, I'm capable of making music and learning and, and having fun.